Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Full Force News Burst Live special with me, Christopher McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80, brought to you by generalsjoesreborn.com. Um, how's everyone doing? I hope everyone's having a wonderful Thursday. I nearly forgot what day it was then. Uh, Thursday day, evening, whatever it is, whatever, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever. I hope you're having a good one. Um, I thought, yeah, a bit of news this morning as uh, a bit of, a bit of leakage slipped out. Um, so yeah, I thought we would uh, go live and discuss said uh, leak um, for Super Seven and their SDCC. I mean, like all of their SDCC exclusives, I think. Um, kind of slipped out, didn't they? Um, or a, a good amount of them anyway. Um, I noticed, I think, very early this morning, it would have been the night before, but I was asleep because, you know, that usually happens at night for me. And um, I think Praternia on uh, Twitter, had, or X, had posted um, those images, uh, one of which was, of course, our own cheeky Zartan, um, Ultimate Zartan. Now, um, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into all of this, and you're already flying into the comments. That's amazing. Hello, guys. Hope everyone's having a good night. Um, so let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it um, with, without any further ado. So um, I found out about this again first thing this morning um, when um, I think I, like I said, Praterni, I think, had posted this a number of hours prior to me finding out about this, um, like about eight hours, actually. But um, yeah, Super 7's SDCC kind of slate, a number of uh, different figures um, were leaked um, for SDCC, which is a little bit of a shame because, you know, like, and also I will say that I don't think this is everything. Would it be everything for SDCC? Um, I have a feeling they might have more things as well. I don't know, actually. Um, I need to check out the the full um, post just to see exactly what was in there. I know there was a TMNT one. There was some other stuff as well, wasn't there? Um, but for obviously, the, for what we are interested in right now, it is all about um, G.I. Joe. And, of course, part of that is the Ultimates line. And the image that was leaked for G.I. Joe Ultimates was this one uh, on the screen at the moment, but there you go. Uh, was this one of Zartan, who comes with a cloak. Uh, a lot of the things that his, well, a number of things that his previous version comes with, but then also that kind of like snake um, kind of like headpiece thing. And of course, the because um, it's the disguise he's basically rocking here, the cloak and the he's supposed to be a snake charmer in the episode, the jungle trap. Now, um, I just want yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so it looks as though it's um, oh that's cool. So Super Seven Ultimates exclusives that were leaked today, or yesterday, whatever you want to say. TMNT Chef Michelangelo, which is amazing. Um, Dungeons and Dragons Invisible Sheila the Thief. I called that one. I think I was talking to Pat about that, and I said, I bet we get an invisible Sheila. Like, I bet we get a transparent Sheila. And we did. And a Thundercats ghost groon, uh, which is quite fancy looking, actually. Um, and these are just the ultimates. Uh, so obviously, there might be some other things. There might be some other things that they um, they still have on, you know, for SDCC. But um, it was listed by Canadian retailer eCollectibles. That's how that information snuck out. Um, and of course, we've got, like I said, the jungle trap, Zartan. Um, now, if you're not fully, like, you know, completely uh, aware of the jungle trap, right at the beginning of that episode, Zartan is spotted charming a snake. But it is no real actual snake. No, it is a camera. And he's, and he's relaying information as he spies on the Joes. So that's really all that's going on in that one. And Super 7 have decided to commemorate that, like, 15 to 20 second scene <laughs> with its with a full Ultimates figure. Now, a lot of people, a lot of comments kind of came flooding through. Um, we were actually aware that this was coming, but, and, and, but only from, 
the description only from a description so i knew that it was coming i just i didn't know what it looked like so that was the first time i saw it um today in the um in the line of leaked image i believe it's a soft goods cape as well for those that are kind of um not 100 percent sure now what can i say about this particular thing that like i'm you know you know me i'm a fairly positive guy but and I, I do like it when they do deep cuts and all this kind of stuff. But I feel like for Ultimates, this feels... I don't know if this feels like a... Not a waste. That's not really what I'm trying to say. But like it doesn't feel like, you know, as, as, as interesting, let's say, as, you know, something like a foreign repaint of a, of a current figure. You know, where you kind of re completely repaint the figure, like a blooming red laser sort of situation, like Cobra Commander, red laser deco, Bosch, that would be wicked. But of course, I'm a little bit biased on that, of course, I get that. But then you look at this one and you're like, it's a very specific moment. And you're basically, I mean, the, the difference between this and the Wave 4, there are differences, by the way, we will look at the comparison momentarily. Uh, but there is definitely comparison, there is def definitely differences in the two figure decos. But it's it's almost like I mean it's like we're back at the classified series and we're getting Master of Disguise Zartan, Retro Zartan, regular classified Zartan. It's just like yeah, there's it, you know it's like a, it's ever so different, but it's not at the same time. So I I'm I'm intrigued as to why they went this direction. Genuinely, um, I do like the cloak though. I think that's pretty dope and. But in terms of like all the other accessories, I mean, it's just effectively that scene and then a few. Anyway, let's look at some of the comparisons here. Now, as you can see, the image of Wave 4 Zartan is way clearer, obviously. The one that leaked is ever so slightly um, not very high quality. It's not potato cam levels, but it isn't perfect. But you can definitely see differences in deco which i'll talk i'll touch on in in a short while we'll, we'll we'll go right into the deco in a second in terms of the accessories obviously they've trimmed down quite a few here they've removed um one of the hands the kind of the one that would make sense to hold the uh, rifle at the end of the you know to hold the rifle like so at the end of his of the barrel is the word i'm looking for so that has been cut because that rifle isn't in there makes sense his his heads are in there but they're ever so slightly different it looks like he's got two open mouth um sort of like teeth showing and one open mouth and then one closed mouth on the wave four version it looks like we've got two closed mouth versions as well but with a slight kind of grin kind of like sneaky grin going on on one of them so they've, they've changed the heads ever so slightly um then of course you've got that kind of like almost like cobra um I'm pretty. It is, a, it is like a headpiece, isn't it? That goes over the head. I'm pretty sure it's like a the cobra, like kind of headband sort of thing. He's got one of the pistols, not two, so he ends up with just one of those pistols. He keeps the knife. He loses the stopwatch and he loses the um, uh, the the bomb as well that, that, that came with the other one, and instead gets the cloak and gets the fake snake camera in the basket. Um, anywho, that is, I mean, that's pretty much what you're dealing with. I mean, it's not a massive amount of change or difference or what have you. You just get in the cloak and you get in the, the snake basket and the, and the flute and maybe a different head based on what I'm looking at with the, the heads that are in there. But then if you look at, and the final kind of comparison I wanted to kind of touch on, was the actual deco and again like i said they're not the best quality it's not the best quality image and the render for the wave 4 is much much clearer but you can see differences quite clearly on this one so obviously the the kind of red is a lot darker kind of like a deeper darker sort of red on the uh on the kind of news art time with the cloak the blue is deeper and darker as well actually um and he's got what looks to be black rather than dark gray uh, po shoulder pauldrons, shoulders, and the kind of gloves, the the kind of the wrist or the elbow length gloves. Um, the boots are also black, and it looks like the kind of silvery grey sort of scenario is a lot brighter too. If you look at the two kind of areas where they have that, like on the kind of shoulder straps, 
the um the kind of it's a much brighter shinier kind of like metallic kind of silver almost and then down on the boots those kind of elements are a lot brighter and shinier as well so you can see the differences and also there's little kind of loop um details on the bottom of the chest piece as well they're like a darker gray which is quite interesting on the new one and the belt's different too the belt's got almost like two colors in there it's got black and it's got that kind of like uh, metallic -y kind of gray color um, and then the skin tone seems to be a lot different as well. Now, I don't, I'm not as going to assume that this is a color changing Zartan because the one for Way 4 was. I wouldn't be surprised if it was. If it, it, I wouldn't be surprised if it was. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't. Um, but it might make, I don't know if it might make sense to, I don't know. I kind of feel like he should be color changing. It, uh, just in general, I feel like he should be. But in any case, um, he's got a lighter skin tone. And again, this happened with Classified. This absolutely happened with Classified. When you look at the, the different Zartans, they also have uh, skin tone differences as well. Obviously, the one that changes color, that's quite a different skin tone. Um, but yeah, as far as we know, we don't... Well, as far as we are aware at this point in time, we don't know if he color changes or not. Um, I... I don't want to say yes or no, or even have a hazard a guess or what, you know, any of that, um, because I don't know. But um, I, don't, I, I would be, I'd be surprised if it did. I would also be surprised if it didn't. I wouldn't be surprised either way is what I'm trying to say. Sorry, actually. Um, but yeah, I, I, I could see it from both points. Like, you know, maybe money saving to do another version. Don't do it with that kind of plastic. I, I don't, I, I don't know if it's that bigger deal honestly I, I definitely feel like he should color change no matter what figure it is i just feel that should be the the case for all zartans but i could be my expectation could be a little bit like unrealistic there anyway um that is effectively all there is to say in terms of the comparison aspect um as you can see it is so close to the original uh, you're effectively getting the same figure, but with just different accessories at the end of the day. Um, so is it worth it? That's up to you guys, really. If you're like, if you're in on the line, if you're like 100% in and you want every single figure, then great. There you go. You've got a, you've got a nice little homage nod to the Sumbo series in the episode The Jungle Trap. If you're looking at it like I have this, I have Zartan Wave Four, I don't need. I don't need this one, then that's fine as well, isn't it? I mean, you know, you don't need every single Zartan or every single figure. And for, I think, a lot of you in the comments, um, you're probably not in on this line at all anyway, either for affordability, you know, like financial reasons or, um, you know, pr preference. Like, I know a lot of people aren't really into them, and I get that. Um, I personally think the Ultimates are phenomenal and but i'm in i fall unfortunately fall into the um the group that just can't afford it right now so i'm aware of that and but that's why i can't really get involved i i must say though it it's definitely it's it's not like it's a bit underwhelming, I would say, for an SDCC exclusive as well. I don't know what they're going to do packaging-wise, but it would be nice if they did something like extra special. But if you look at previous SDCC exclusives, they don't necessarily do like crazy special packaging. Sometimes they'll they'll change the, you know, the kind of like the color and the deco and some of the design on it. But for the most part, it's the same packaging um, for the ultimates in those window boxes. Um, they, they might do something for this one. They might have like a little you know, the slip cover is a is a cloak. That'd be quite cute. Um, but we, yeah, again, like I said, not a clue on that one. I've just I've, all we were aware of, there was a Jungle Trap Zartan coming for SDCC, and we knew it was going to be effectively the same figure. But having seen it, and I am I am sort of glad that they didn't that they did do deco changes, and. It gives people an opportunity, I guess, if you're not in on like all the waves and you're just getting like the odd exclusive here or there and you wanted a Zartan, it gives you an opportunity to get that one, I guess. So there's that there's that angle as well. But um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, again, I'm a little bit 
biased when it comes to this stuff and i always want to see like palatoy figures getting uh you know getting done so i was really excited when they did red jackal when they did uh even though she's not um palatoy uh, Red Knot Baroness. I thought they were really, really cool figures. Really enjoyed those. Um, massive shout out to Andrew Franks who let me, who lent me those figures to unbox on an episode. Um, but obviously, I had to hand them back after I played with them. But they are really nice. And I have the first wave, and I'm really into the first wave. And I have Flint, and I really like Flint. But in terms of like a completist on this line, not a sausage. It's just like. It's it's just crazy, and they have. I mean, again, if I could, if I was able to, I would one hundred percent. I would one hundred percent be getting all of these. Um, imagine if this leak had been Ninja Force Sartan in exactly past the pierogi. Ex imagine that. Imagine how incredible a Ninja Force Zartan would be in the Ultimates line in an almost. If he was in the cartoon, because I don't think we got Ninja Force Sartan in Deke, did we? Or have I made an absolute blunder there? I don't remember Ninja Force Sartan in Deke, but I could just be having an absolute nightmare. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Because um, we had things like, I mean, we had Blooming Sonic Fighters Road Pig, and we had all the other Ninja Force. No, I don't think he was. I genuinely don't think he was. Ah, there we go. I, yeah, I I have to say I really don't think he was in the. No, he wasn't. I I I had that thing where I was like, no, I'm pretty sure of that. I'm pretty confident having seen it all. Um, but no, he was definitely not in it. And with that, um. I would I would suggest it would have been a really nice thing to do because they've done it before with reaction they've done it with a couple of other figures where it's like yeah we know they're not in the cartoon but hey this is what they could have been what it could have been like and then you on the little file card on the back you have them repainted or like redone in in different deco over their sunbow um artwork uh Jamie says almost prefer not color change as it does affect the skin color and it looks a little off due to the gimmick um yeah I yeah it kind of looks a little bit fake doesn't it the um, um, the uh, the kind of stand like this actual skin tone before it changes color, it's like almost a little kind of transparent ish, isn't it? Um, Paisano says, For the same price, I'm considering the executive replicas La Muerta. Anyone have any experience with those figures? I can't help you on that one, I'm afraid, Paisano, but um, I'm sure someone in the, ch the chat might be able to. Um, the current release already color changes, I I'm absolutely aware of that, and I know, and that's what I was saying about. The other one change. I, I think they all should. If you're a Zartan figure, you should color change because you know it, he would in real life. <laughs> so that that was what all I was getting at. I know the I know the way for color changes. But if if you were like not if you didn't get that one and like this is one that you could get a Zartan figure because it's you know it's a SDCC exclusive and this is an opportunity for you to get a Zartan figure if you missed out or didn't want the way for one. If it didn't color change, it'd be a little bit sad, wouldn't it? Um, not percent in on ultimates, ninety in on classified. Where's the ten percent, Paisano? Um, aside from the cost, I just can't handle the mental bandwidth of collecting multiple GI Joe lines, and I'm also focusing on other lines besides GI Joe. Says Ryan. Imagine if this. Yeah, yeah, I've done that one. Sorry, pass. Uh, I wish we could get play sets with alternate gear in classified. I want this disguise and gear in classified. Yeah, it's like they they steer away from Sunbow stuff. I mean, I know we've got the fudgy bar with Quick Kick, but it's slightly different, isn't it? It kind of feels like that could be with any kind of release base. I know it's Sunbow related, but um, uh, yeah, I get I get what you're saying though, Christy. It would be fun to have Zartan have more than one disguise, and and his disguises are pretty poor. They're just masks at the end of the day. He still looks like Zartan with just a mask on. So yeah, I agree with you on that one. I want more disguises for Zartan. Um, just can't afford the line. Love the aesthetic. I'll support O-Ring from them for sure. Says, but yeah, I, I think a lot of people are kind of in that boat, aren't they? Uh, no Zartan in Deke. Thank you, Phantomus Ragnarok. I was, a sh I was almost certain. It's just that moment when you're sitting online and you go, oh, have I said something that I can't back up? Uh, but no, I, I thought I was right. 
Um, just hoping they have the ball joint next as past the pierogi. Not a clue. Like a madman, I've collected five different scales of Joe figures. RKW, I know how you feel. I had to stop, though. Um, I mean, I had, I was getting like the three zero figures. I was getting Mezco figures. I was getting Super 7 at multiple scales and classified. And it just got to the point of just, you know, just like, what the hell is going on here? Um, I think that the Super 7 Ultimates look cool, but the price is high and the articulation isn't good as classified, says the real Zim. Isn't as good as classified, I should say, sorry. Um, Paisano says, colour change is the hill Chris will die on. Yes, it. I, I, that'd be weird, wouldn't it? A colour changing hill that I die on. I could deal with that. He should, if only because his color, he colour changes in the episode Jungle Trap. Exactly, Ryan. Yeah, he does colour change in Jungle Trap. And a smirking head. Yeah, that's the that's the thing, isn't it? Like, if we go back, there is a smirking head there on the far top right. You can see him, like, just giving that, like, little smirk. And you're right, that is one that we didn't get with the first Zartan. So it's almost, it might be worth it just getting the head that Zartan is most known for. Um, a little smirky git. Um, a Black Series Jedi cloak would work. Yeah, it would. You're right, Paisano, actually. That's a good point. For classified, you mean, yeah. I wonder if Super 7 didn't do the line if Hasbro would do something like animated Spider-Man and X-Men figures, but for Joe, um, they probably wouldn't if, I mean, if Hasbro were doing something very Sunbow related, but they just, they haven't really touched that. They haven't even touched it in the, I mean, you've got like sort of redecoed uh, vintage O-ring figures in Duke and Cobra Commander, but, and the Cobra Trooper with the knee pads and everything, but like seriously, they did. They they hardly really ventured in in the Sumbo direction, which I still don't understand. Like, like I, get, I I I I do understand why Super Seven took it on and where the direction why they went the way they went with it. Like focusing on the cartoon, squeezing in a few comic references, a lot of foreign stuff, a lot of foreign releases. I get that. It's great. It's like all the deep cuts, all the nods, all of the kind of collector based things. But I'm very surprised Hasbro have never really grasped doing something like that. I mean, how long did it take to get um, cartoon-related Dungeons & Dragons figures? And they didn't really knock that out of the park, did they, Hasbro? Um, Super 7 now back on that again. Um, yes, Ryan, Once a Man Cobra Commander is Sunbow, but it's not going to be... It's not going to be the animated model, is it? It's going to be very much classified up is what i'm getting at they they take aspects from the card well they have to take aspects from the cartoon because they're it, like a lot of the characters are known for it but what i mean is they haven't grasped the sunbow like sun like super seven have super seven has just gone like straight in do you know what i mean um do i know that for sure do i know what for sure what what did i say oh um just coming on, just the cloak and the snake basket is new. <coughs> no, the cloak, the snake basket, the little kind of cobra tiara, and one of the heads is new as well. So there's one, two, three, four, five items. The flute as well is, is an item that's new. So one new smirking head, one sort of like cobra headband sort of thing, um, the flute, the snake basket with the camera, and the cloak. So it's five new things, basically. Um, do I know what for sure? What did I say, Ryan? Do you know for sure once Van Cobra Commander won't be based on the move? No, I'm no. What I'm getting at is that they're not going to be doing what. All right, if one came out for Ultimates, it wouldn't be the same as the classified figure. Just like this Zartan ain't the same as that Zartan. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's going to be more, there's going to be like more depth and detail and the deco will be slightly different and the um, the look will be ever so slightly different. You know what I'm saying? Like it's they're, it's, they're not, it's not going to be the animation model that Super 7 would create. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not going to be taken off the cat, off literally off the screen like Super 7 would do it. It will be classified in much the same way that they've done pretty much everything so far. Even Retro Duke and Scarlet are like classified to a degree. There's not, you know, it's not like you're not looking at the, the cartoon when you look at those two new classified figures. Um,
I, I'm confused. I'm not going to keep going on about it because I've, I've already said what I what I said, and I don't mind being questioned about it. Um, yeah. So, like, all I'll say on this one is that I think it was a bit of an underwhelming scenario, that for sure. You know, especially having like literally the figure, and then you know it's the same figure again, basically. But I felt that way when Classified brought out like six Zartans. I was like, we don't. I don't, I certainly didn't need a retro Zartan. I bought the retro Zartan, but I didn't need it. Do you know what I mean? Like I was looking at that kind of like it. I mean, yes. I mean, all three of them are different, <clears throat> but not different enough. It's it's almost like there's a character Zartan that you could probably get right once, and you don't need to do it like a thousand times. I think I'd have been perfectly happy with Zartan being like the one deluxe version. And then when that got really difficult to get hold of, just one other version would have been fine. Um, and then that's where you go into like Ninja Force and other things like that, which I think would be is is definitely the way forward. I don't think constantly. I mean, I like Zartan's cool and all. I mean, do we have Zartan only collectors in the chat? Do we have like like in the same way that I know a lot of you guys love one's kind of character is are do we have like zartan fiends in here who need everything zartan because i personally when i got like when i got when we got that retro zartan i was genuinely like do we need this the the master of disguise classified one is is great it, and it's got like everything thrown they threw everything at it you got the color change you've got like all of the gear like 50 times over uh, super chat Zartan probably yeah that's a good point yeah actual Zartan who often super chats the show every now and again yeah um, anyway anyway I I, you, I would say that I'm surprised that I, I I'm I'll I'll tell you what I'll still say it I'm surprised Hasbro never did the Sunbow thing properly they never did like a full on sunbow infused sort of like bunch of releases it's always been the odd deco here or there it's you know it's always been stuff like that it's it's never been like it's never been a thing of like let's just go full sunbow and do something really fun and different and crazy because that's effectively what i think has i mean hasbro could have done this they could have done not even like ultimates in in terms of scale and stuff but they could have done cartoon related direct like, animation model accurate cartoon figures and i think they would have done really well but it never it never really happened like i said you get you get them where they touch on it here and there you'll get like a, a deco homage or you'll get like a i don't know you'll, you'll just get things like that or like one element will be popped in there but you never get like a full on let's go balls to the wall crazy pants and like I, I still think you know the whole uh, VHS um, man. I tell you what, X Men ninety seven. Let's talk about that for a second because that is that's been blowing my mind. I've loved that cartoon. I don't know what you guys think about it, but I have been loving X Men ninety seven. Like it's absolutely phenomenal. And that like episode five. Oh my goodness! No spoilers. But I was legitimately like this the whole way through. Like I found myself at one point with my with my mouth open, <laughs> and I often find myself actually with my mouth open. But like it, it's great. And I look at that and I go, why can't we have? Why can't we have a continuation of the Sunbow series in the same way? I wonder. I'm just going to put this out here. I wonder if, if X-Men 97 has... I mean, I don't know how successful it has been. I think it looks great. I've loved it. I've lit, it's been It's been phenomenal, I think. And I know, heartbroken over episode five. Like, seriously. Um, I don't know. I think, like, if they look at that and go, okay, yeah, X-Men 97 have done really well, maybe we should do a continuation of the Sunbow cartoon. And I know it's different. I know the Sunbow is a little bit more tongue in cheek. It's a little bit more goofy. It's a little bit more kind of silly. But come on. 
I mean, a decent, a, a brilliant cartoon is a brilliant cartoon no matter what. And I know people have got like, you know, they're a bit on, you know, some people are like, you're either one or the other with Sumbo, aren't you? You either love it or hate it, I guess. But I don't know. I just feel like it's got some absolute, it's got some legs, I think. And especially how successful the IDW, the IDW Saturday morning comic or Saturday morning adventures was that was great and i just wanted i i'd have been happy with the that kind of continuation of the comic and no it didn't happen and we're probably not going to get it for skybound because they're doing their own thing with everything so they're probably not going to venture into that which is a that's even more heartbreaking to me so why don't they just go let's do the cartoon because people are buzzing over this stuff let's get the cartoon done i just i just think carry on after the after the movie and do like, you know, almost, I, I'm not, I, you know, I know the Deke still has its place, but it could all, you know, you could always kind of like put it to the side a little bit and go, right, we're continuing from the film and we're going to do G.I. Joe, Sunbow, and just keep that fire, keep that vibe and just drive it all the way to the bank. Because I think you could do some crazy cool stuff. You could incorporate, you know, like you could think about when it would have been in the timeline. You could have incorporated new characters at the right at the right moments, like their versions and their different, like, you know, mission-based gear or what have you. Uh different like that, that would just be sick. I don't need like all the adult stuff. Give just give me like a fun X-Men 97, which again is actually quite you know it's 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 like highbrow kids car cartoon isn't it x-men um but like you know with joe like i just give me that goofy fun crazy stories brilliant voice acting just just give us that please i'm i would go absolutely nuts for the a, a continuation of the sumbo series absolutely nuts and like i said i'm just so surprised they've never really They've never really ventured into that. It's like it's like, well, that's been the past. We'll leave that there and let's do all the this kind of like half doing something new, but still sticking to the old each time. Do you know what I mean? Like never really developing it to the point where it's gonna, you know, evolve. So if you're not gonna do that, go back to where it was really friggin' great and do an X-Men 97, but for Joe, it would be so good. So good. Just Sunbow, carry on from the movie. Get Cobra La back into it again, like towards the end of the series. That might be the big twist and reveal. Um, that they're that it's not dead. They're still like, you know, they're underground or whatever, or um, you know, where's Globulus since he like fritted away? And where's like um you know, uh you know, where is everybody basically? That'd be it would be so cool. I just think it would be great. Even I, you know, that's the thing. I I still watch the Sumbo cartoon as well, Paisano. I still put it on. Um, GI Joe eighty seven and eighty eight. Yeah, exactly. GI Joe eighty seven would be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Yeah. Um, Kev Jewel one hundred says perhaps down the road when classified winds down, Hasbro might venture into Sunbo. I think you get. I just think you do it now, and you do the same thing that they're doing with X Men ninety seven with the toys. You just incorporate it into classified. So classifies the hot ticket, bring the cartoon out, and then have cartoon-related releases. They get to do the same characters again. <laughs> they get to, you know, get your snake eyes out, get your, you know, get all those figures out again, and, you know, do new things with a little VHS kind of box sort of vibe. I just think it... it it's so obvious to me. I feel like it's so obvious. It just needs to happen. I just feel like it. I, I just feel like am I am I am I wrong in thinking that this is? It just seems to be like an absolute home run in the making. And I've been. I mean, I've wanted this forever. I've talked about having a continuation of the Sumbo series probably since the Deke series. <laughs> um. Anyway, anyway, um, that is kind of where I fall on it at the moment. Um, Shelf Presence says, kids today want a more highbrow show. If it's corny, it won't play. It won't be for kids, Shelf Presence. This wouldn't be for kids, would it? It would be for us, 100%. I doubt, like, I mean, I'm sure kids are watching X-Men 97, but not like us, but not like we are. 
you know, like we're watching that with that like vibe going, I love this, I know this, this is amazing, and it's really good. Like it's this, it's for us. Ain't like nothing's, I mean, you, you there's what's the there's no point developing stuff for kids <laughs> at this point because there's just no way, like uh, you I, it, people, it, things have just changed so dramatically since we were children. Um, so dramatically that it's 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 a different landscape as a kid and also like you ha you have to kind of skew super young for for kids to be into toys at the moment it would it would it would feel it feels like that anyway um from like a lot of people i know who have kids uh, a lot of things i've seen online a lot of people who talk about this who blog about it when they've got kids and all that kind of jazz like i there is d definitely a difference a different kind of vibe of how they interact with their environment and like you know when i was a kid god i hate saying that but like you know when i was a nipper when i was a little a little kid a little a little lad i would be i was so into toys like it was toys and cartoons and that was pretty much it toys and vhs and i was happy then it kind of got into like sports and i wanted to play lots of sports but i was still into toys and sports so I had the steel, uh, these uh, special core poster on my wall, but also had Manchester United posters on my wall. Um, and then, you know, then there's the other phase where you start noticing things happening on your body. And then, like, I was still collecting toys up until 90, what year was it, 94? And then I was r r ritualistically embarrassed in front of hundreds of kids by a friend of mine called Matt, who... I still don't, I still haven't forgiven him for this, but we, you know how you get like the mobile sort of like um, school classrooms when you've got like a school building and then there's a mobile because they can't afford to build more of the school. So they just set up like these kind of like portable sort of, you know what I'm talking about, like a mobile, uh, it's like, a, it's like a chalet on sticks basically. Anyway, we would go into that and we'd have our session in there, whatever it was. And we were lined up to go into that room one morning, um, you know, whatever it was. Matt was at the front of that kind of line talking to um, some – this is like our first week at school. Like we, This is our first week at high school. Um, and it's different for us. We would have been, what, 12, 13 years old? I was 11 when I went – actually, I would have been 11. So it would have been like 91, 92 time, right? And – he was at the front of this of this line talking to two girls in the front of the queue, Claire and Vicky, and I hadn't met them yet. Like we were, this is what that thing where you've you know you're uh, you're kind of brought into the school like in different like you know because it's a high school you're from different areas. Some people from nearby. We were from a town like quite a distant, like you know about half an hour's drive away. Uh, but there were a lot of kind of local kids, you know, that went to this high school as well. So we all go in there and we're all just kind of forced to get on with everyone, like to like instantly like, you know, make friends with people we'd never met before. It was weird. I only knew like one other person in my class, in my kind of like form group. And then you would kind of be split up anyway. Anyway, Matt was at the front of that queue and I was kind of quite far back. And Matt is talking to Claire and Vicky. And he, he points at me and he goes, all right, Chris. And then he says to, he says out, out loud, Chris still collects toys. He's still got GI Joes. And I was just like, why? Why would you, why would you destroy me like that in front and all like, you know, everyone's laughing. And I'm just like, oh, thanks, Matt. And again, like I was, I had a thing for, for Claire and, um, that's past, obviously, but um, um, and and I was like, oh god, that you know, like my heart sank, <laughs> it's like just torn out of my chest. I'm like, oh my god. So he goes and embarrasses me in front of the entire. It was like one well, of the entire school. It was just an entire group that were going into this this music. It was a music session as well. So I'm just like, oh mate. Anyway, never forgave him for that. It gets better. This story. So I, even though that had happened, I was still. I still hadn't changed my room. My room was like the room of a five-year-old's and I was like, what, 11, 12, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. And it was the summer, that first that first year at high school, now the summer. So we've had that first year at high school. I got through it okay. I didn't have to, you know, it didn't really come up again, the whole G.I. Joe thing. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway, if you were to see my bedroom at in in uh, this this summer of like what was it ninety two, let's say, you would have seen like GI Joe vehicles on my windowsill, including a, a, a Sky Striker that for some reason I was an idiot and had left on the windowsill for many years, so it completely changed into that kind of like tan color that it goes when you leave it in the sun for too long um you'd have seen again like manchester united posters all over my walls you'd have seen uh, i had like pl- i had lots of toy dinosaurs including jurassic park dinosaurs on my cabin bed <laughs> still had my cabin bed um with on the little desk part of my cabin bed and, and you know stickers on it and stuff it was a it was a child's bedroom right it was ridiculous and i was still rocking that going into 92. Anyhow, I say that because Claire and Vicky, who Matt had been talking to at the front of that queue, decided one day that they were going to have a bike ride to Munsley. Now, where I lived in Munsley, there was like this beautiful beach. It was like, it's, it's gorgeous. It's a, it's a really cute little uh, uh, village on the coast in, in Norfolk in England. Absolutely stunning. There's an even, there's a, there's a gun emplacement, like a barracks that used to, that's on the cliff face that sits on the top and as kids we would like play all over it i mean this thing was like mental like it's a huge concrete building basically that's been abandoned and it was open for the longest time like you go inside it but it was all like dingy and gross and when it rained it would flood and it was kind of like a bit dangerous and like i think like loads of uh like home well loads of we didn't really have a homeless problem there but i think loads of people did drugs there there was a bit of a you know homeless situation where people would kind of like sleep in there and stuff like that it was a bit messed up so the council had to block them up that's kind of like you know brick the the entrances up so people can get inside so anyway like we would jump up we would like jump off the cliff and also it was crazy and the on and we're talking like hundreds and hundreds of feet drop to the beach like it is phenomenal view on this this thing anyway we would play on that all the time anyway munsley's great and um growing up there was fun as a, as a little kid as well like it was just a lot of a, it was a very adventurous time and anyway they decided claire and vicky to go on a bike ride from where they were living at the time which was north walsham to munsley now they thought they'd pop it like I, this is before the this is before the year this is before the time of mobile phones of google maps of map quest even like there was none of that they but found my house i guess like someone must have given them the address because i don't recall giving them the address to my house but they found it all right and i was out at the time i think i was i think i might have been at matt's matt's or uh, riz's who's across the road from me sean risley and i remember coming back home seeing two bikes just kind of like laid down on the front in front of our on the grass in front of our house because you could do that as well when you went back then you could just leave your bike wherever and it wouldn't get stolen um because you were in a, a town a village of about like 300 people that knew everyone so it wasn't like you could get away with being a criminal um so yeah so anyway i'm, I'm like whose bikes are they thinking it was like you know maybe a couple of other kids from down the street so i get in and Claire and Vicky are sitting are upstairs in my bedroom. My mum, I think my mum says, "Oh, uh, two girls have come for you." It's Claire and Vicky. They're upstairs. I'm like, my heart sank. I was like, "Oh my god!" I go upstairs and they are like, pl- like messing around with all my toys and my stuff, and they're like giggling and laughing and all this kind of stuff. And I'm just like, uh, "How this couldn't be? Like, it couldn't be a more cringy, like awkward." what the hell am I going to do, right? You know, like, it was just, it was beyond... Oh, telephone book, yes, RKW. It was. It could have been that, actually. Um, it could have been that, or Matt could have told them where I lived as well. Um, I could have told them, I just forgot. Like, I can't remember what the situation was. I, pro- I, might, have t- I might have known that they were going to do a bike ride and might have given them my address, but I can't remember doing that. But it's very likely that could have happened. Um, anyway... Yes, that it was. It was that that was that moment, and they were fine. Actually, they were fine with it. They were they were quite. Um, they were really nice. Actually, Claire and Vicky are great. I still I'm still friends with them to this day. But like the it was the fact that like you know as a kid it is just like absolutely mortifying. 
um, you, that you were like, uh, you know, you, you, especially I didn't plan it. I didn't like want, my room was in the process of being, like I was definitely upgrading and I was definitely getting a different bed and changing things and all that kind of stuff. But that was that moment when it was like, right, I guess I'm doing it now. <laughs> I guess I'm doing it as soon as they've gone after I've cried. I'll then I'll that's when I'll I'll change everything. But um anyway, we ended up I think I kind of coaxed them out of the house and we ended up kind of hanging out like in on the beach or whatever. But like it was one of those things where I was just absolutely mortified. And yeah, they had jokes and they were poking fun and stuff like that, but they were really cool and it wasn't like a you know I, I'm making it it was it was just how I felt at the time, certainly not how they were really feeling about it. I mean, they're still kids themselves, and they were also enjoying playing with the toys that were in there as well. So anyway, it was, but it was, yeah, it was hilarious. Um, yeah. Oh my God. Anyway. So that was, the, yeah. I, the only reason I said that is because that was the, the different, a different time and how we, op and how like as a kid, like I was all about toys, even up to like that period. And even though I put everything away at that point, I remember putting my Joes in, um, like a bunch of different boxes and kind of tucking them into the back of the uh kind of closet and everything that I had closed that and then I took all the posters off the wall that I had I um got a new bed shortly afterwards just a regular one not a cabin bed and uh that's when I think I got the uh upgraded to like whatever whatever it was the game system at that point and that's what took over but again like I was still interested in toys because i would go into stores like woolworths and i'd go into places like um you know langley's and toy master and all those kind of toy places uh toys r us as well whenever i got the opportunity but it, it just wasn't an opportunity for that until it was much later on in years um near near me anyway and so i would like you know i'd sneak a little look every now and again at what kind of toys were out there and and i would you know i, I was still collecting joe's up until I want to say 93, 94. Um, but then it was kind of like I stopped. And I'm not sure if I stopped because it just wasn't, didn't seem to be about anymore. And it had actually kind of stopped being sold. But I remember going into Woolworths for years afterwards and seeing the 90s Action Man displayed, like the Hall of Fame kind of Joes and stuff like that, and just being like, oh, these are cool. And, you know, I, I did actually have... Uh, I was actually still collecting at the time when the Hall of Fame stuff was out. But yeah, and then there's that period where, you know, it, it's like from that point onwards, like 94, until, oh God, because I missed a lot. I missed all of that kind of like mid to late 90s sort of revival. I missed like all of the extremes and the savages and the Sigma Sixes. Sigma Six was actually just about where I kind of came back into it again. And that was because I was... I was working in, in New Jersey at a, a, a summer camp as a counselor at the time. And I remember we'd have days off to the New York and we did a New York trip, a bunch of us on our day off. And we went to the Toys R Us, Manhattan Toys R Us. And it, I just loved it. And I remember going in there and seeing um, Sigma Six and all sorts of other stuff too. Um, like there was a whole like huge segment on the like, huge like display they had for G.I. Joe at the time. It was phenomenal. Like you had the Jurassic Park, so, well, the big dinosaur, like the T-Rex in the corner. And then you had like the G.I. Joe wall with like the car busting through or the Jeep busting through and then the parachute, um, full-size parachutists coming out of the ceiling. And then you had the Transformers section in front of that with an Optimus Prime. And then you had... Um, what was it like Superman stopping a truck coming through the ceiling as well? It was really cool. Like it was an amazing place. And the Ferris wheel was freaking mental. Uh, it was a real fun ex experience going to that Toys R Us in New York. And I was really sad when it got shut down as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, I just, I've missed a bunch of comments. Sorry. I would have befriended you after knowing that. I like that Stygian. Thank you. Um, nowadays it would have gone global, Chris. It probably would have done. That would have been like a, it would have been a, a video that got posted to X. And I look, look at this absolute loser getting like you know um, owned by yeah whatever. Look at his room. It's like a kid's room. Then I walk in and I'm all like, <laughs> yeah, it would have been extraordinarily viral. I think. 
Um, I have Joe in my classroom now, says Stanley. That's awesome. Shout out to Vicky and Claire, indeed. People are ridiculous. Who hobby shames people? Well, Matt was doing it because I think he was trying to get... He was just trying to look good in front of people, and he was using me as a conduit <laughs> to that. Uh, I don't really hold it against him. It's it's again, it's one of those things that it's 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 made for a fun little story after the fact. And he sh what he was doing is he was warning me, and he was saying, "Chris, you better change your ways because they might come round on a bike ride one of these days." Knowing fully well that he probably planned the whole thing. Um, in high school, they were hot boxes. Oh, they really were, weren't they? Thankfully, we were in the UK where it was just raining all the time, most of the time. Um, portables, yeah. Effectively, that's exactly what they were, those big portable buildings that you would have a class in, yeah. Uh, like a manufactured home, yeah. Uh, kids now don't like toys at all. My kid is 10 and wants nothing to do with toys, just video games and Harry Potter books, movies. Yeah, again, like... It, it it seems to vary. I know a lot of guys who, you know, they swear down their kids love their G.I. Joe collection. And I get it. Like, I understand it because I'd be the same if I was a kid. But I think there's a lot of pressure on kids. In much the same way I've just explained that pressure I had going into high school. I think, obviously, it's a, it was a little bit later in, in, you know, my kind of childhood. When you get to high school, there is a certain element of growing up that has to be done. Um, whether you are emotionally ready for that or not you know, that you do have to, you're sort of forced a little bit to mature very quickly when you get into that situation. Because all of a sudden, it's not like, you know, you're not getting picked up by your folks anymore. It's like you're getting on the bus and you, you know, you do, you're doing it your own way. Or you, you know, event, I wouldn't say I, was, I wasn't driving at 11 years old. But like, there's an element of that kind of things are kind of getting a little bit more serious now. Um, and yeah, and like, I feel like now that has gotten younger for kids because of the way that you know phones um and all that kind of stuff uh kind of like the, the the internet in general has kind of made it almost impossible for like a, a kid to i mean when you look at like the the you look at the stats of like you know anxiety and um depression in children and kids like that it's it's quite insane um and i understand 100% because I look at I look at that situation that they're in sometimes, and I go, I couldn't deal with that. I couldn't deal with like, and I'm I'm sure it's just, I'm sure it's not every school, and certainly not in the UK. Um, but I, I, and again, I I hate looking at X because for some reason it, it pushes like this ho these horrible videos on there for some reason. I don't want to see fight videos from like a school where a student's beating a teacher up. I don't want to see it. Um, but unfortunately, it's like that's all it seems to be on X at the moment. And again, like I'm, I'm trying, I'm there trying to follow like, you know, toy people and all this kind of stuff, and I just can't see any of that because I'm just my the feed is full. I mean, X has gone down the toilet anyway since well, since obviously it was taken over. But like, it, it's got to the point now where I don't want to see all that stuff. And I look at that and I go, my goodness, it it looks like, and again, this is because I just keep getting pushed this stuff it looks like an absolute war zone in in schools. And I know it's not every school, and I know it's not certainly not every school in the UK, and I'm, most of the stuff I'm seeing is like high schools in the US and stuff like that. But then I think, God, think about high schools in the US, and then you add the, you know, you've got anxiety, depression, all that kind of stuff, you know, from, you know, things on the internet, and people filming everything and, and you know, acting up in in sessions and stuff and then you add that layer of oh yeah and kids get shot in school all the time and it's just like oh my god i i couldn't do it like i just i i could not do it and i i was one of those kids when i was growing up i really wanted to go to high school in the us i thought i'd have an edge by being british but i really wanted and i wanted to like play on the basketball team and all that kind of stuff and um that was i really wanted that to happen but it never obviously never materialized um and now i couldn't think of anything i would want to do less <laughs> than go to a high school as a kid in the united states i just would find it horrible i think horrible experience um um christopher moody says our luck they'd continue from the deke series 
uh, the media seemed to be more interested in 30 year olds who were kids in the 90s and 40 year olds who were kids in the 80s. Uh, there's definitely, a, well, we've had, I think we definitely had our 80s nostalgia sort of period, didn't we, Christopher, about 10 years ago? And I feel like the 80s nostalgia has actually been kicking around since it turned 1990. I feel like the 80s has been this, it's always been looked at as this kind of like period of time, like a very specific period of time from 1980 to 1989. It's like this, it, it is just its own thing. And much like the 90s, I would say too. Um, <clears throat> and then, then it gets a little bit foggier when you get into the 2000s, doesn't it? Because it's like 2000 to 2010, almost like they call it the 2010s and then the 2020s. And now we're, I suppose, the 20, I, well, I suppose we're still in the 2020s, of course, duh. But like, you know, I feel like um, it's harder to determine style and stuff like that in the, in they're the, the, the periods of time that don't have very clear stylistic, you know, properties. Whereas 80s, 90s, even the 70s and the 60s and the 50s, they also, it's, everything seems to be very decade based very clearly defined decade based. And then you get to the 2000s. It's just like, it's a free for all. Everything happens now. Um, and most of it, we're looking back at the eighties. Um, kids don't like toys at all. My kid is 10 and wants nothing to do with toys. I think I read that one. Sorry, FC Viper. Um, I'm just going to, I think I scrolled up to check some messages and now I'm scrolling down again to make sure uh, I haven't missed any more. Then they gave you a mega swirly. That would have been hilarious, wouldn't it? I pantsed a kid in front of a girl he liked in the lunchroom in sixth grade. That is effectively what Matt did to me, but from a distance and without the pants part. Did Matt tell the girls you collected G.I. Joe or International here? He didn't go into the specifics, Paisano, but I should have stopped him and said, actually, Matthew, I collect an Action Force International Heroes and some G.I. Joe figures. Uh, if you'd cast your minds back to when Palot and again, that do something like that, that would have, that would have made it better, wouldn't it? Tiger Force Sky Striker colors. I meant the jet, not the pilot. Um, hell yeah. I'm up for that. I'm up for, um, yeah. I'm up for a Tiger Force Sky Striker, the full one, not Sky Striker, the Tiger Force figure. My God, that's confusing, isn't it? Um, I bet they had Care Bears. They might have done. I also had um, one Care Bear, but it was one of the little ones, you know, the little kind of, um, kind of minifigure ones. Um, which one did I have now? It was um, it was the bedtime bear, I think. <clears throat> or was it? Or it actually might have been the. It might have been the the, the four, Was it the four leaf clover one, the green one? Can't remember now. It's been so long. But I really wanted all of them, and I could never find them anywhere. It is nice to see the classified design showing up in the current Joe comics. Duke issue four had some great cameos. Definitely shelf presence. Have you what? Have you read Cobra Commander issue four? Oh my goodness. Um, 87 was my last year of collecting. I immediately discovered Iron Maiden and my world changed, says Kev Jewell. Um, yeah, that's another thing, I guess. There's, there's there's that thing of like when you find something, it kind of changes you a little bit too, doesn't it? Music was definitely a part of that. Um, I remember getting like, because um, I mean, I was, I've always listened to music my entire life, but like, again, certain periods, certain you know, things happen like getting your car and getting a sound system for it or getting like a, a big CD player for your bedroom or whatever with some big speakers and just being like, oh my God. I remember having, a, it was a mini disc on top, CD rack, multi CD player, uh, radio, and you could try to mess with all the EQ and everything on it as well. It could change all of the treble and the bass and that kind of jazz. And a tape deck at the bottom. It was a wicked, proper big Sony one. And two big old speakers with it as well. Loved it. Um, um, remember to hit that like button. Thank you, FC Viper. I bet you Matt doesn't have 5,000 subscribers. He might do, actually. I'll have to ask him. Um, his his kid probably has 3 million or something, doesn't he? That's probably what's happened. Um, Wilfredo, I used to go to the Times Square Toys R Us. It was awesome. It was so good, man. I loved that Toys R Us with a passion and i was so sad that they ended well i didn't they reopen it again um I, I i feel like it's it's kind of closed and then reopened again but i i could be wrong on the reopening thing um instagram is better than x it certainly is it certainly is 
Um, and that's why I find myself on Instagram more than I, and well, Instagram, I don't really use Facebook as a personal tool anymore. Everything's just used for, the, everything's just for the show now. I very, I very rarely use my personal, you know, uh, accounts for really anything other than, you know, um, like Facebook Messenger and things like that. But yeah, in terms of, um, in terms of all the other social networks, it's all about the Full Force podcast. <clears throat> Thanks, Elon. Indeed, Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, the reality is you would have been bullied for being different British. Uh, probably, probably, but I'm hard. I could have taken it. Um, being bullied sucks. It's one of the reasons why I've been lifting for over 30 years. Real Zim, yeah. I, it, again, like, I was, so, I was, de I mean, there I definitely wasn't bullied. Um, there were moments, though, that I remember of, you know, like older kids, maybe kind of like, I don't know, just, just testing it a little bit. I remember one kid grabbed my, I was, we were on the back of the bus and I was one of the, I'm very outgoing and I will try and make friends with everybody. So that's how, that was my way of trying to avoid that. <clears throat> it was just be friendly with everyone. It doesn't always work. But that seemed to get me by in high school. Just be friendly, be nice, be polite, be good, be good to everybody, right? And then you shouldn't have an issue. I remember one specific time though, you got the older kids on the back seat of the bus, and I was sitting next to I can't I, one of my friends on the the seat just in front of the back seat. <clears throat> so all of like the older kids are you know taking up the back five seats because that was the thing to do back then. And then when that generation part moved on, you would then become the backseat people. And I remember I was drinking, um, I was drinking like a can of something like Coke or something like that. And I remember one of the guys in the backseat grabbed my arm, pulled it behind the chair and was like pushing it up, like, you know, like almost like, you know, just about to break my arm. So I remember I had the can of Coke and I just threw it over him and he let go. And it was just like, there was a, the, the, some two of his mates had to hold him back a little bit, but there was a bit of a kerfuffle, and they were like, "Well, that's what you get when you you know you try and break some kid's arm, sort of thing." And um, and then the next that following weekend, we were playing football or soccer um, on the on Gold Park, and the guy that had done that, I will not name names because I actually am friends with him again now. Uh, like th this was just one of the, like I said, it was a moment. And he he was like like looking for me basically, and he jumps over the fence. He comes running over, and he's like about to like you know punch me in the face, or whatever. And guess who guess who appears in this story, guys? Yes, it's Matt, famous Matt from the front of the queue, who uh, embarrassed me in front of many many people, saved my life that day by because he was hard as this is another thing. Matt was my age, but he was hard as nails. One of the hardest person people I've ever met in my life. I wouldn't, you'd never mess with him. Like I've seen him, I've seen him do things. I've seen him, I've seen him in a get into a well, not get into a fight, but be uh, a fight started. And there's about three people on him, and he knocked all of them out one after the other. And they were not like, you know, I'd have struggled to even protect myself. I'd just been laying down, getting my head kicked in. But I saw him just go one two and then there's a bit of a scuffle and then three and it was like that it was it was over in about it was over in minutes anyway he dives in because we're playing football together the bunch of us but matt's involved and he took he kind of literally jumped on this guy and they they got in a fight and then we're all trying to split it up and calm everyone down and then and you know and then like that's where i tried to kind of play devil's you know not devil's advocate what's the word tried to try to be switzerland and try to calm everyone down and speak to this guy who'd done this originally and tried to, you know, and 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 everything was chill after that. And it turned out that he had gone home covered in Coke, obviously, but the, you know, Coca-Cola. And his mom had had a go at him. And, you know, like, a, you know, it obviously wasn't the best environment, shall I say. Again, I'm not going to name any names. I'm not going to put anyone, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus on this one. But, like, clearly he did have a difficult home life. And I understood that, and I apologised for doing what I did, even though he was twisting my arm around the back of the chair. Um, and I just, I, but like, there was that thing of like, you know, it was fixed, it was sorted, and there wasn't an issue anymore. And going from that point onwards, we, you know, I've been friends with him 
uh, ever since. And we were friends before that. This is the that's the weird thing. Like you know, I say f friends. We knew he, I knew him, and he knew me, and we were cool. But it wasn't like, do you know what I mean? It wasn't like we were buddies. And we'd hang out together. They were older kids anyway. Uh, they were like two years older than than us, I think, at that at that stage. And um, anyway, yeah, it was uh, <clears throat> interesting. This this episode has gone on a, such a random tangent, hasn't it? A rangent, I'll say. But at least you're getting more um, information about my life, I guess. Um, being in high school for the past 25 years, stories, evolutionary, I won't retell. Totally, Stan. Um, Wilfredo says, those issues you brought up are why I want my daughter to live in Germany and not in the USA, safer over there than here. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, oh, my goodness, Stygian. Can I read this out? My best friend told the whole school I pleasured oneself while, <laughs> while imagining a girl I really liked. The whole school knew the whole school. Wow. Wow. I can I can just imagine how embarrassing that would be. Seriously. I oh wow. FC Viper says, I have 8K followers on Twitter. I made so many friends there, but I rarely visit anymore because all I saw was, yeah, agreed. Um, it is true though. Like I I've got a what I mean, it's one of our like most successful social platforms as well, which is funny. I think we've got well, actually, we we've got like uh let me think, let me see. Yeah, we've got like four and a half K, so not as good as YouTube. Uh now that we've got five K. But um it was de it's definitely one of those ones where I don't want to just drop it. You know what I mean? I don't want to just kind of go like I'm not doing this anymore. I'm just gonna get rid of it. Because I don't know, I just feel like a lot of work has gone into building a decent audience. And again, it's people that like I interact with on, on there. But the other thing is I don't want to see all the feed. It's just garbage. And you can't even blimmin' fix it. Like I've deleted Ed, like tried to like say I don't want to see videos like this anymore or whatever. No, you really just have to pay for it if you want something workable, I think. And even then you probably don't. Uh I can imagine Stygian. I feel so bad for you on that one. Um Stanley says, I share my toy fandom with my students often. Some fandoms overlaps, but not Joe's at the moment. I remember the closest thing I came to that was I was doing, I was I was a teacher at a music college, uh, Access to Music, and I would do multiple different uh, sessions. I would do like composition and working with the digital audio workstation and stuff like that, you know, produ producer stuff, all sorts of different things, uh, all the way through to like, you know, performance and freelance music practitioner and things like that, where you were kind of like, teaching them how to operate in different areas of um, the music industry that aren't just, you know, making music and, and selling it. Um, just kind of like working as, uh, you know, as a freelance artist or working a, in a studio or whatever, just doing things like that, basically, right? So one of the sessions we had was a composition session. And I remember uh, bringing a ton, like the whole, like, ep the whole uh, point of the, the, uh, the session that day, I come up with this idea, bringing a like a comic box in, huge comic book box, loads of random issues of anything, all sorts of different stuff, and I put it at the front of the class. But in fact, I brought a couple of boxes in, opened them up, and just kind of spread a few out, like you know, kind of X Men and uh, GI Joe and, and all sorts of different things. And the whole point of the session, this is how cool my my sessions were. They had to pick a comic. And they had to write the the, the score for that, that comic. So they read it and then they have to come up with like, you know, what, what is kind of being, you know, what are the, the thought, the, what the aesthetics giving you uh, in like a, in a, in a musical kind of way, like what are you kind of getting from it? And almost like using it as a storyboard for a film and creating a musical score for it. Um, so like then they, they dug the crap out of that. And we did that a couple of, a couple of times one of the sessions was making music for computer games as well. Uh, that was a lot of fun because I would just bring in my Xbox and the session would be like, you know, <laughs> playing games and then, but like for a reason, like listening to the music and working the music out and playing games from like 8-bit stuff on like, you know, like the little kind of uh, vintage consoles all the way through to like, you know, ridiculous scores on like, you know, Call of Duty uh, games and stuff like that. So I would go in, bring, and and they'd love it. They'd be like, yeah, we're playing games and we're making music to computer games. And their whole, like, one of their whole, like, core things of the curriculum was to 
um, make a piece of music or make a score for an entire game, and they bloody loved it. Um, so did I actually. They were the, they were fun sessions. Um, I remember one kid did a really good. He like I what I did was I got them to do just one little like thirty second clip of a game and put music to it, and then like we'd share our work and all that kind of stuff. And this one kid did uh, Jungle Strike. You know, the helicopter going around, and but really old school. And he made the sound effects for the 30-second clip, and he did the music. Like, he went, like, full on for it, and it was so good. And he even did it, like, proper 8-bit, and I showed them how to do, like, how to create 8-bit music, uh, kind of, like, sounds and effects on your instruments that you're kind of playing in so you can do it with like distortion and throw some like 8-bit crunchy stuff on it and stuff like that and then you can you find like certain little um keys and organs that kind of make sense for uh 8-bit music or 16-bit or whatever it might be and they loved it and he made some app he made an absolute banger um uh, I'm trying to catch up on comments here. Sorry, guys. I was collecting Power of the Force 2 all through high school, very open about it, and my nerd, and was still one of the most popular kids in school. Nice one, Scott. Thankfully, even though everyone knew I collected toys, I was also one of the uh, kind of main... I was probably the best basketball player in the school, I'm not going to lie. So I did have that to, as backup. I was, like, cool and nerdy at the same time, I guess. We called the school bus the cheese bus. Amazing. Um, is that because it's a massive bit of yellow cheese um i played three sports in high school but i was also the biggest nerd i always had comics and talking about star wars and trek especially in high school next generation had just come out god yeah i remember that um nobody messed with me uh, that's good shelf presence i'm glad i was i never that's the thing i never got bullied bullied that the only thing that really ever happened was that that kind of twist of my arm on the back of the chair and it was such it was just a one silly thing that he decided he wanted to do that day and there must have been something to it we must have been having some sort of like banter or argument i just remember the what happened i don't remember the actual like what had actually happened before that so i might have been asking for it <laughs> the other thing but anyway he did yeah so i wasn't it wasn't necessarily i was def, definitely not picked on plus i hit a growth spurt when i was 14 as well not that it really helped in high school because that would have been 11 12 it was towards the end of high school the last couple of years i'd hit like six foot something or six foot so i was a lot taller than everyone else at, at school and yeah i wouldn't really i wasn't really getting a lot of that kind of stuff at that point um yeah, always taller, so never bullied. But yeah, bullies suck. They hate their lives, so they take out on others. FC vibe. But that's exactly what was kind of going on, yeah. Um, it is a rando tando, Scott, isn't it? Did you guys all watch G.I. Joe and drink cola together after you made up? Uh, we should have done. That would have been hilarious, wouldn't it, Jeffrey? Got Claire, Vicky, Matt, this guy that did this one, I'm not naming because I don't want to, you know, put it out there. Uh, even though everything's cool now. I just don't, I don't, you know, I don't mind calling Matt out for embarrassing me. But I'm not going to call someone out for do making a mistake, if you know what I mean. Um, Steps Toy says, didn't I say yesterday, Chris will wind up streaming something because of a leak. Genius equals me. Yes, Steps Toys. You did actually say that. And, um, and but did you, you didn't guess that I'd be talking like past an hour mark about my life growing up as a child though, did you? Um, Oh, middle school. Yeah, absolute worst age to have your ego obliterated, Stygian. Yeah, with the the old, yeah, crazy pants. Give me six random numbers, one to 59. <laughs> uh, for some reason, I figured you as a cricket player, Chris. Uh, no, I did I did enjoy playing cricket. The, the only time I really enjoyed playing cricket, though, was with my granddad, or who I would call him my nandad. Uh, he loved cricket. And um, whenever we would go on, like, do like family kind of um picnics or whatever we'd go out and like you know go to the park or something um we he'd bring the he'd bring the the ball the bat and the uh and the stumps and everything um and we would yeah we would play we'd play a little bit of cricket he'd love it and like it's so funny like even though you know when my mom and her sisters were younger my aunties um when they were kids he would not let up. Like they would play cricket together and he would just be like smashing it for six. Like they'd, you know, like not helping them like, you know, uh, you know, win a game or anything like that. No, he was like totally on it. So I'm gonna obliterate these kids. Uh and he did the same to me. Uh, but no, he was he was wonderful, my nan dad. 
And um, he like he's another big reason as to why I am the way I am now. Like my nandad, and I'm going to keep calling him a nandad, but no matter what people say, um, he had the most incredible um, model train set. It was unreal and he built this thing himself like he was a genius he was great with like you know carpentry he was great with electronics he was great with just delicate details like dio building and everything like he was the he was one of the most genius like people i've ever met for that like you, you he could make anything and it was phenomenal and he had this most the most beautiful uh model train set and again, like he built it. I mean, I've got pictures of it. I might have posted them in the past um, when talking about him um, on my personal page anyway. But like, I remember I took pictures of it before we had to kind of take it. We, the sad thing is we had to kind of take it apart because when he passed away, the uh, the room that was housing it like had to be um, used as a, uh, it was basically a stable, like a, a, a stable room. It was huge. And he built this whole thing, and Dad and I had to go in and, and de like we've still got every single thing about it. We kind of we delicately took it apart, but it was just heartbreaking, you know. Like you can imagine as well. Like it wasn't. It, it was. It was fairly soon after he passed away, but still, it was emotional as hell. And as a kid, I would like go in that you'd crawl underneath it. You go and open the door, and like it would have. It would literally be like a big like table around the entire room and you'd crawl underneath to get inside and you come up and inside it like you'd stand up and it would be all around you and it was massive and it had like canals and it had like you know little uh, roadways and it had all the little stations with different stations that some he made up and some were real and like he you know like bridges and a farm and he even had um a, a military base or an, a raft base that was kind of like an extra section on a shelf above in the corner that had loads of like you know had a plane on the runway had the, the guys kind of working on it it had the little tower it had it was amazing and it was like you know rolling hills and all this kind of stuff that he built himself he'd made everything himself it was phenomenal and he had all of his model air, airplanes hanging from the ceiling so you can imagine i grow growing up with this around me and, you know, like him loving, like buying me toys and him and Nan buying me toys and everything and just like spoiling me rotten. So I, I blame them mainly for, <laughs> for my kind of love of toys and collecting and all that kind of stuff. But it was absolutely insane. And he loved cricket. Um, so I'd only really ever play it with him. Uh, but no, I was a, so I played football in like soccer in, in high school mainly and basketball basketball was my main sport but i love i love playing football as well like i absolutely adored it um i played rugby a couple of times but didn't really enjoy it as much for the school and um then it was then basketball became my life at like 12 years old 13 years old like it was like i from that moment on it was just basketball nine nine hours a day like basketball every single day is like up basketball sleep up basketball sleep it was crazy and that went on for years as well um i ended up i ended up playing like semi professionally um for the kingsland fury and we had some pretty cool games man i'm not going to lie like they were that was a, an interesting time um i would get paid for so the the reason it was semi professional was because we would get paid for um coaching so we would go out and coach like kids in the area um so my kind of like main job was playing basketball on a weekend game then training three times a week and in between all of those kind of bits and pieces coaching kids in local schools and so you'd end up getting paid for um the coaching aspect and then you get paid for the training and then you get paid for games and stuff like that so it was really cool um and it was enough like to you know for, for me in that time anyway to kind of live on um, but then, you know, I, I kind of lost my love for it, honestly, because it was, it, I mean, I wasn't getting, it was, I wasn't getting like, <laughs> I wasn't getting a lot of money. It was, it was minimum. It was, it was, wasn't crazy good, but it was, you know, it was cool. Um, I stopped playing in, I want to say, God, when was that? 
it would have been when so I stopped playing competitively before I moved to Norwich and that would have been about 2013 14 maybe I want to say so the proper competitive play stopped actually probably earlier than that may even have been about 2010 2011 and then I started playing again for another team, but not competitively necessarily, just kind of training with them. And they were a decent team in Norwich. And um, but then like I got injured. That was it. Yeah. Oh my God. I messed my ankle up really badly. Um, I went up for a jump shot. And as I was coming down, the guy who was coming out to defend me, he'd kind of like come forward as I was dropping down, and his foot was underneath my foot, and I literally landed on it, just went clink like that and snap. The noise was horrible. And I remember just being like, yep, yeah, that's done. And I, to, I went off to the side of the, the court. And I the, the whole process, you tighten your sneaker up really tight to prevent the swelling. I know that sounds a bit odd, but that's what you do. And then you, you need to get like rest, ice, compression, elevation is basically what you're supposed to do. And um, because of that, <laughs> uh, I'm sitting on the side with this little ice pack that someone had. Because we, we, it, was, it was a pretty decent setup. So they had things just in case you know, things like that happened. And I remember having my foot up and like the ice on it and everything. I'm like, right, I think I'm okay. Cause I was about 30 minutes from home driving and had to get in the car and drive home with a frigged ankle, my right ankle as well. And then, yeah, go. sorry, I've got another question come through. Is this new three and three quarter line or seven? Eight? This is ultimates, Paul. This is the SDCC ultimates Zartan on the right hand side. It's got nothing to do with the, uh, the O-ring. Um, Sorry, I was on a tangent there, my fault. But anyway, bugged my ankle pretty badly and then ended up kind of not playing for like nine months I was out. I remember just not being able to like run or walk on it for the longest time. It was so bad and I put on loads of weight and then I was like, okay, I need to get back into it again. So then I remember, um, I remember kind of like, playing a little bit for them again afterwards, but not much. And I haven't played competitively since. You know, pick up games sometimes. Few and far between, though. Um, we call that the Bruce Bowen over here, Chris. Which one? What are we talking about, Steps Toys? Uh, I can't remember what I said. Uh, coming up next, the college years. That'll be on the next stream. We'll do the college years. That, that was a fun time. Um, I'm an, I'm at that point right now with the same ankle, says Scott. Oh, that sucks. Steps Toys, I'm shocked, shocked, I say, that semi-pro basketball in the UK didn't pay anything. Shocked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. like I said, it was enough to get by at the time. But yeah, it was uh, it was funny because I remember um, this having the ever so slightest I like example of being famous in the smallest possible way. We were going round, I was going around Kings Lynn at the time, because that's where we, I was playing basketball. And I was just going around like shopping, I think, with someone, like some friends or whatever. And we went into a subway to get some lunch at the time, I think. And there was a poster on the wall in the back of the the last game we played, I think. And like, come to the Kings Lynn Fury versus whatever, you know, Brixton game next week or whatever. And the picture they chose was one of, of like a bunch of us like in the middle of a game because they had a photographer there as well a lot of the time, and um, and then there's me laying it up just like just like Jordan like like floating through the air kind of thing. I'm like, I didn't know they were using that picture. I didn't know that that picture existed until I saw it on a poster in a subway, and um, and I remember seeing it in there. I'm going, oh my god, that's so cool. And there were a couple of kids not in the subway but on another another time asking for my autograph at a game, which I thought was hilarious and cute. But obviously that was that was my ever so slight feeling of what it might be like to be famous. Do you know what I mean? Like seeing yourself in a on a poster in a Subway sandwich shop and um and having some kids ask for your autograph. But um anyway, hilarious. Oh, the Bowen was famous for stepping underneath guys on jumpers and causing them to hurt their ankles. There's a 16 minute supercut on YouTube. I'm watching that when I check it. Thank you, Steps Toys. Do I still have the picture? No, because I didn't have it in the first place. It wasn't mine. And so, like, I didn't even think at the time to ask, it would have been James if I could have it. Um, he was, James Banfield was the, um, he was the coach at the time. And 
I didn't. Yeah, I didn't ask. I, did, I didn't even think to ask for it. Um, but I would. I, do you know what? I'd love to find that. I'd love to find that that picture. Uh, they did. There was a few of them, and I didn't see all of them because I didn't go into Subway every week. But like, I, and and they they put them. In, they they had it so they would put them in certain places around town as well. So um, there were probably multiple pictures of it. Go not just mine, but like other or other players with the stuff. But the funny thing was, it was like all a lot of the other players were in the shot as well. It's just thankfully I was the one laying it up. And did I make that layup? Can't even remember. More than likely not. <laughs> um, right. If I see you at a con, I'm asking for your autograph. Absolutely, do not do that, Scott. Uh, that is that would be that would be almost as embarrassing as Matt shouting, "Oi!" He collects GI Joes in front of people. Um, anyway, that this absolutely turned into the weirdest episode I think I've ever done, but it's happened, and there you go. Um, let's. I'm just going to put this back on screen. But actually, you know what? Let's just let's just let's transition, and we'll finish this. This finish this one out. For those who were confused, it joined like I don't know three quarters of the way through just to get the McLeod life story. Um, my apologies for that, but uh, the news is that Super Seven um, Ultimates SDCC exclusive Zartan uh, has been leaked, and it is the jungle trap um, scene that is getting the Ultimates treatment. And um, I'm I, the informa more information to come, I guess, uh, probably closer to the time as well. But yeah, you're looking at soft goods cloak and um, a few new accessories as well to throw in there, including a new head by the looks of things as well. Um, full force, come for the Zartan news, but stay for Chris. This is my life segment. Exactly. Thank you, FC Viper. Interview date has been set, Stanley, and I can give it away. So you'll have some idea as to when we're actually going to do this. Now, I say it's been set. Tentatively, we are going with Tuesday at 6.30 in the evening. So the likelihood of it coming going out the same day is almost impossible. Um, but definitely I'll be working on it going into the next day and hopefully should have it finished edit-wise um, on Wednesday. It'll either go out Wednesday night or Thursday, effectively. That's, that's my aim. Um, typically, as well, work is crazy at the moment. But that's always the way, isn't it? Um, so yeah, but yeah, we're tentatively saying 6.30 on Tuesday. So evening Tuesday, I'll be talking with everyone, with Emily, Lenny and Tony for the first time, which is great. Not actually for the first time talking to Tony as, uh, Tony and I, um, have hung out a number of times. What's really funny, I hope you won't, you probably won't mind me mentioning this, but, um, we hung out a little while ago. We took, I think it was a post, a social post. It was a while back. Um, Travis Moody came down from um, Los Angeles, uh, and we all basically hung out. It was Lenny, uh, Tony, um, Chris from Disney, and um, and Travis, and we all hung out and had some, you know, drinks and food and everything. And I'm talking to Tony, and we get into like a little conversation, and I'm, and he's like, he looks at me and he goes, "Yeah, I thought it was you. You were at." So and so's wedding, weren't you? And I was like, "Oh my goodness, yes, I was." I can't believe. And the funny thing was, we hung out and we talked and we had a whole conversation at this wedding. But because we didn't know the context of each other, I guess it was like, and it was funny because it was a Hasbro sort of situation as well. Like, but anyway, um, we actually had a full-on conversation at this wedding, and neither only we only remembered when we started chatting again. It was like, I remember you. It was so it was so funny. So um, that was interesting. Like, and it is weird because like when you only have one interaction with somebody, it's it's always difficult to rem like to remember that. Like I find anyway. Like, and even when it's a memorable one, and it, which it was, I have many memorable experiences with people. Do I remember things? No. Not, like I'll lose, I forget names immediately after being told them. I'll forget full big things. Like, you know, chunk. I, I definitely think my brain is broken. But at the same time, yeah, it was funny. And we were both looking at each other like, hang on, we've met before, haven't we? We've talked, we've had a conversation. We hung out. We danced together. 
anyway, that was great. So we'll be chatting with Tony for the first time on the show, at least. Um, and that should be great as well. Um, what are we saying? Give it away, give it away, give it away now. I'm not going to give anything away, Scott. So does Tuesday night, you'll be able to reveal I'm going to do a bat is coming. Probably, Ryan. <laughs> Probably. How much are you guys looking forward to another movie line and watch the reactions? Probably won't say that. Tell Emily, Tony, and Lenny to get that HasLab whale cooking or there will be trouble. Did I read that in the correct... Did you want it to be Robocop there, New York Night, 1974? Is that the gap and then trouble? That's the only gap and trouble I, I'm aware of in terms of references. Tell Emily, Tony, and Lenny to get that HasLab whale cooking or there will be trouble. Um... Ask Lenny if the classified Rattler stand will be like the Sky Striker. That's one way of tripping him up, isn't it? Um, Stanley says, I have a destination wedding in Manchester, Vermont in August. How far are you from Vermont? Eh, still pretty far. We're, we're still talking like, I ain't running over there. I can tell you that much. Um, Steps Toys says, if they're doing a Joe TF line, get them working on my Joe HQ Metroplex has lab. On it, Steps Toys. On it. Um, anyway, yes, yeah, so I'll be doing that with them. If you fancy, I guess, like, Maybe I'll put a post on. I'll put a social post on um, on our like Facebook, X, and Instagram. Just saying, hey, we're going to be interviewing the JoJo Joe team. Do you want any? Do you want to ask any questions? We'll see, we'll pick some questions from from uh, <clears throat> from you, the listeners and viewers. Uh, and we'll throw that on there. But anyway, that's it for tonight, guys. Thank you very much. And like I said, I'll be posting a special post on that, so you'll be able to put your comments and questions on that social post. Not here. Because once this is done, I'll probably never look at it. Look at it again. Just kidding. Um, anyway, like I said, Super Seven um, SDCC exclusive Ultimate Zartan from Jungle Trap has been leaked, uh, so we can wait obviously a little bit longer before we get any more information about that. I will be back, um, no doubt. To I don't know. There's so much to do, isn't there? I mean, I'll be preparing for the weekly on tomorrow, tonight, and tomorrow. So we're going to be a weekly. Sunday, we've got probably Let's Talk Classified Blowtorch. And then if there's any other news that crops up between now and the weekly, then I'll see you then. Um, what's that link? What link? What link did I just say? Anyway, um, I don't know what link you're referring to. Have a great evening. Get rest of your Thursday. Like I said, I will post something on the old... Um, on the old Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for asking questions. I'll see you later. Have a great night. Stay fresh cheese bags. And as always, after three, you know what to do. One, two, and three. Full force. Laters. That's it for this instalment of the Full Force News Burst. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe. See you next time and as always, Full Force. Make sure you get involved with the discussion by liking, sharing and commenting on these videos and as always you can keep up with the show after listening by following on X, formerly Twitter, at The Full Force, liking the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Full Force. We've also added a brand new Instagram so check us out there as well at The Full Force Podcast and if you would like to contact the show you can message us on any of those platforms with feedback and questions. We also have a Patreon page so if you want to show your support for the show, see your name up in lights on these videos or enjoy exclusive bonus content then check out patreon.com forward slash the full force podcast or click on the link on any of the posts this podcast appears in full force